Hello, am I audible? Yes, sir, you are. Okay, thanks. Okay, so if you have any doubt, you can start asking uh, your question. So uh, before that, you can raise your hand so I can uh, follow some order. Yeah, because sir, I am having an off topic question and so that is related to that. The mm -hmm. session was conducted at 3 p.m. That computational thinking session was conducted, but it is not being uploaded on YouTube, sir. Uh, okay, you write to computational thinking uh, instructor. I wrote, okay. I wrote to discussion form. So yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. thank you. Sir. Yeah. Uh Daras Pratap Singh. Yeah, so uh, Daras Pratap Singh, you have any doubt? Vikas? Sir, I have not, I mean, sir, started uh, learning this week seven uh, mm -hmm. now. It means today only I am starting. So sh should I join this session or means? Should I see the recorded session of this this session? Because I I don't have any knowledge about week seven. I am starting today. Then I don't know. Like it's up to you. Like if you have if you don't have any doubt, then I I don't see of staying in the session. Okay, you can probably. Uh, I will complete my week seven and. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Yes, uh, Maria. Sir, uh, activity 7.3, uh, question number 6. Okay. <clears throat> question number, sorry, I forgot. Like question number 6, right? Yeah, six, sir. Mm -hmm. So, uh, <clears throat> so you have a function in cardinalities of, of the set A and B are four, respect four and four respectively. Then, what is the cardinality of the graph of the function, right? So, uh, you have a function. Right. This is your function. A, it's it's a function from the set A to B, right? And it's given that the number of elements. That means the cardinality of A and the cardinality of B is what? 
Uh, and what you need to find, uh, what you need to find here, you need to find the uh, cardinality of the graph of the function, right? Yeah, and, yes, sir. And how you define the graph? Uh, function to a cross b. No, what is the definition of graph of a function? How you define the graph of a function? Uh, x comma ordered pair x comma f of x. Yes, correct. And where this x varies? Uh, x lies in a x element of a uh, f of x element of right uh, so here it's given that the cardinality of a is what the cardinality of a is 4 right four. that means a has 4 element right yeah so let's say a is a b c d right Mm. So then, if I have to compute this this gamma of f, okay, then what will be the elements of the gamma of f for for this function f? It will be minimum four, right? Not minimum four. It has exactly four, right? It's see where this x belongs. X varies over a, right? Yeah. So then how you can, so if A has four elements, then how you can get five elements? It's not possible, right? So first element, you will be A, a comma F of A, right? That's a function. Then B comma F of B. B uh, C and comma F of C. F of D and finally you will get D comma F of D, right? So, yeah. so if A has four elements, okay, then this gamma of F, so A is precisely the domain, right? Yeah, okay. Domain of like... the function, right? So, so that if the domain of the function, if the domain of the function has four elements, then this gamma of f has also four elements, right? So, so what basically I'm trying to say this cardinality of a is same as the cardinality of gamma, right? As you can see, you have, if I have an element here in my domain, then this corrupt corresponds to element a comma f of a in the gamma of a and this this correspondence is is one to one okay so it's a bijection so the cardinality of a that is the domain is same as the graph cardinality of the graph of a uh, clear now yes, uh, also like uh, question number nine uh, uh, that's same. also a similar type of question. Same uh, activity or? Yeah, same activity. Yeah, so, 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 okay, so again, like I almost proved question nine as well, right? Yeah, sir. Uh, second option is clear. Cardinality of S is same as the cardinality of uh, B. A. Hmm, uh, sorry, A. Yeah, then uh, that's then or equal to A cross B. Yeah, so. See, uh, the cardinality of A, right, whatever is the cardinality of A, it's certainly less than the cardinality of A times B, right? Yeah. Right, and what is this? This is precisely the cardinality of? Uh, yeah, F. Cardinality of the graph of the function, right? Yeah. So, so that means the cardinality of this is certainly less than this, right? Oh, okay. Less than or equal, right? And the third option is incorrect, right? Yeah, cardinal. It's not the same as cardinal. B. B. Yeah. So because see, you, you may have a function from uh, let's say you have a function from A to B, right? A constant function, right? F of x is equal to let's say one. Right? If the let's say A is a, B, C, D, right? And B is what? B is only one, right? So in that, in this case, if this is your function, then in this case, what, what will be the cardinality of gamma of F? Okay, the cardinality of gamma of F is still four, right? And certainly this is greater than one, which is the cardinality of, okay, so, so this is again, so the gamma of uh, like the graph of cardinality of the graph of the function, may be greater than uh, it's in some sense it's completely independent on the cardinality of b okay so that's why this option third is incorrect 
excuse me sir <laughs> sir which question number uh, is seven point three question number nine okay so any any other op any other uh, doubt uh, uh, sir uh, seven point four question number one so you don't have any doubt from question number nine now nine is clear yes sir nine is okay. clear uh, okay so what is your next doubt uh, seven point four question number one seven point four question number one okay so yeah uh, uh, okay so uh, so it's basically asking uh, equivalent definition of uh, what in some sense uh, so, of yeah, what? so what's the uh, like uh, when you say define limits for a sequence like uh, what is the uh, See, like uh, question number one has nothing to do with limit of a sequence okay it's, it's basically it's the definition it's asking the definition of sequence <laughs> right it has nothing to do with the limit of the sequence right so so it's basically saying uh, you have bunch of function right you have lot of function in the option right and it's asking yeah. which, which of the function uh, may represent a sequence right okay. that that is what it's asking right so first tell me how you write a sequence okay so before uh, going into this this thing how you write a sequence uh, uh, a n. Sorry. A, uh, sequence can be uh, represented as uh, limit n tends to infinity a n. No a. See, so say again. Like there are two things. Okay. So why you why you need to write n tends to infinity? So see, n tends to infinity. You write to check the limit of the sequence, right? So that is a different thing. I am simply asking how you how you generally write a sequence. So you have bunch of numbers, right? And with some index, right? You have, let's say, you have a1, right? You have a2, a3, a4, a4 up to n. So on this, this, so so what what actually I'm using here? I'm using an index here, right? To represent the sequence. So I have one here, right? I have two here, three here, three, and four. four here. So this, okay, like this, basically this index, this index varies over. Uh, varies from, yeah, varies according to n. Oh, natural numbers. Right, so this, this, uh, this index, whatever I am representing, uh, so they basic they varies over uh, natural numbers. So, so for example, if I consider this sequence a n uh, equals to one by n, right? Okay, so if I write this this as uh, so this so this actually I am using this uh, index to represent this sequence, right? So what what will be my a one? This is one, right? One. And one, a two is two, one by two. One by two. One by three. One by four. And so on, right? So indirectly, what actually I am doing? So, so for one, right? When I am writing one, I have a one, right? Yeah. So for two, a two. A two, right? So for three. A3. I I have a three and and so on right for n I have n n so so when I'm writing this like this then what actually I'm getting I'm getting a function right so I'm getting yeah. a function right from from the set of all natural number to where where this is real, a real sequence. Real right? sequence. Real so numbers. This, so this A is AI. So all these AIs, they are inside R, right? They are real numbers. Right? Yes, sir. Yes, so, sir. Yeah. So so then we are basically what I'm getting, I'm getting a map from the from the set of natural number two to the set of real number. So so finally. I have started with a sequence, right? I have started with a sequence. So I have started with a sequence. And this sequence basically gives me a map 
from the set of all natural number to R, right? And uh, conversely, sub conversely, suppose I have a uh, conversely, suppose I have a function, suppose I have a function, right? It's a function from the set of all natural number to R, right? And if I have a function, right, then I can then it must have an image, right? For one, I have a, I must have an image f of one, right? And for two also, I must have some image f of two, right? And for three, I must have an image f of three, and so on, right? For each natural number, I must have an image inside R. So what I will do now, I will denote this f, f of one as a one, and similarly a two. Similarly, a3 and so on. So once I have a function, then what actually I'm getting, I'm getting a sequence. a1, a2, a3, uh, a4. That's what I'm So on, right? So again, for, for a function, if I have a function, for that function, I can construct a sequence, right? So, so initially what I have done from a sequence, okay, I can create a function from the set of all natural number to R. Okay, so let me, let me uh, tell you from week 7 onwards, okay, from week 7 onwards, when, when I'm saying uh, set of all natural number, so this basically means my natural number starts from one. Okay, one. this is one, two, three, and so on. So I'm not, in calculus part, I'm not considering zero as a natural number. Okay, so, so what basically, so okay, so what I'm trying to say, so my sequence are, are basically same as a function from the set of all natural number to R, right? Okay, sir. It's clear now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so now mm -hmm. if you if you look at this uh, this question, okay. Uh, so you have you so you have a function from R to R, right? What is what is your first option? Uh, R to R. F one is from R to R, right? So do do you think this is a this is a uh, sequence? sequence? Can I say? Uh, no. Sorry. And it's not a sequence, right, sir? Yes, correct. Because here, what what is the problem? This this starts with R, right? The domain is R. So if you see what I actually have said, it's I can think Should this as a from the natural, natural number. Yes. yes. And what about option two? N to R. That's correct. And what about a option three? R minus is not possible. That's a domain, so that's wrong. Hmm. Fourth and option also similarly wrong. Fifth option is correct. Fifth option is correct. Why? What what is what because is then this is upset the far, so it's all right. Yes, 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 yes. You are correct. Yeah. So so this is this is a map. So I can think this Z as a subset of R. Yeah, you are correct. So now this this our question is clear, right? Yes, sir. So, thank you. Thank you so okay. much. Hello. Hmm. Hello, sir. I joined a little late. Can you this this question is from activity seven point four, right? First question. Hmm. Hmm. Can you explain it again? Uh, no, you can watch the recorded session. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Only that many doubts. Thank you. Uh, okay, fine. Uh, Sir, I have a doubt in activity 7.3. Asit, uh, Asit Kumar Nai. No, no, this is Hamas. Yeah. What is your doubt, Asit? Uh, yeah, uh, I have doubt from the Activity 7.1. 7.1, yeah. Um, question number 10. Question number 10. Yeah. Uh, in the third sentence, hmm. uh, there is written 1 by e to the power x is an unbounded function on r. Uh, I don't know what is unbounded function. Uh, sorry, sorry. In the third, 1 by e to the power x is an unbounded function on r. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, yeah, that I am not understanding. Uh, 
I'm not able to understand what this is saying. So the statement basically says this is an unbounded function on a high. Hmm. So, so first tell me, so do you understand that uh, if I consider this function f of x, okay. So, so tell me wh what is the domain of this function? A real number. Yes, because this one by e power x actually it's, it is defined on whole r, right? So I can consider this f as a function from r to r. Okay, so yeah. that was my first concern. And next, tell me what, what you mean by bounded function. That, that I don't understand what so that is bounded is. and non-bounded. Okay, so no, so the thing is, it's basically you need to know the definition of bounded function. If a function is not bounded, then the function is uh, unbounded. Okay, so the only thing you need to understand what is bounded function. Okay, so 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 if you have a function right suppose suppose you have a function a2 okay so be, before that tell me what is bounded set do you have any idea about bounded set no sir the, i don't know i am do, not from that no no that is no 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 that is certainly don't tell that you so should know. i should I try? Don't to know because it, you are not from mathematics background. Okay, that is a really bad reason. Okay, you tell that I don't know. Okay. So, uh, so should I try to tell what is bounded set? Yes. Yes. Huh. Uh, so, it is uh, one, two, three. Uh, 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 increasing by one, it is a sequence like one, two, three, and up to n. So the upper bound is here one. So, sorry, the lower bound is one and the upper bound here we don't know because it is keep increasing. Hmm. And uh, uh, like uh, if we say uh, bound of uh, one by two, a sequence of one by two, one by four, one by eight, multi, uh, multi, one by two multiplying by one by two, then the upper bound is one by two. Mm -hmm. Because uh, as keep we increasing the numbers, uh, it will going down. So we don't have the lower bound. Yeah. So, okay. So in some sense it's correct, but again, like this is not the uh, precise definition. Yeah. Okay. But again, more or less you are giving the idea what is uh, uh, bounded uh, below and bounded above. So, so, okay. So uh, Asit, are you here? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, uh, so okay. So, what basically I'm trying to say. So, first, try to understand what is bounded set. Okay. So, what basically I mean by bounded set. Suppose you have a set A. Okay. Which is a subset of real number, right? So, I I can say that. So, I say that A is bounded. Okay. I I say that A is bounded if all the elements. So, I say that A is a bounded set. bounded set if all the elements in this set a are in between some numbers let's say uh, it's all the some elements finite of, numbers sorry so is it a finite number some finite numbers bounded by i mean yeah yeah, yeah. so uh, so all the elements uh, all the elements in this set x they are less than some number, okay? And as well as they are greater than some number, okay? So you can find this S and R. I will explain you with some example, okay? So you can find some S and R such that all the elements, all the elements of this set A, they basically inside this, this range, okay? That, so what? Uh, so, in other words, what I am trying to write, I am uh, I'm trying to write that this x is inside this interval, okay, inside this interval for all x in A, okay. So, what, what basically I am trying to say, suppose you take this set 1, so, 2, 3, 
sir r and s is included here doesn't matter okay so oh, okay uh, it it really doesn't matter if you want to see it's see if, okay so if you can always like if you don't want to include then you can always bring you can take some lower number okay so you can replace r with r minus 1 okay it's, it's not a big deal okay sir so suppose you consider this set a okay 1 2 3 okay. so what i can write i can write that see i can write all the elements of this set a they are certainly greater than 0 right greater than or equal yeah. to 0 and as well as they are less than equal to equal to 4 4 okay even four. you can write this as 3 okay this this choice and r and the choice of r and s they are not unique okay they can they we can have multiple choices of R and C. Okay. Even you can replace this with five. Okay. And I can replace this with minus one. Okay. It doesn't matter, but I should, I should able to find some finite numbers. Okay. That, that is the goal. Okay. So all the elements of AX, okay. They satisfy this, this condition, right? Okay. Uh, yes. You got my point, Asi? Yeah. 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 So that means A is a bounded set. Okay. Right. Okay. So next. Okay. Now you you so it, this is easy. So now you consider consider a, a slightly slightly trickier example. Let let me take one, two, three, four, five. So in particular, I'm taking all the natural numbers. So this a is nothing but it's the n. Okay. So now 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 do you think I can I can find a find a r and s that that hold that that certainly that bound this set a no sir we can but we can only find r am i right Upper yes bound is yes, not yes, Lower yes limit we can find yes correct you can you can find r correct oh. asit so you can you can find r okay so I can say that all the elements of my set X is greater than zero. Okay. So in that case, what I can say, I can say that my set has a lower bound. Okay. In, in that case, if you can find this R, right? When you can find this R, okay, then you can say that your set has a lower bound. Okay. okay. And if you can't find S, okay, you, you, you will say that this set has no upper one. In that case also, the set is not bounded. Okay. So you can say your set, you can say that set A is bounded only when you, you can find both R and S. Okay. So, so here you can find the R, okay, but yeah. you cannot find the S. So in that case, this R is not bounded. Set. Okay. Right. So, okay. so for example, now if I take again, if I take this A to be my set of integers, what about this one? Not bounded. Not bounded because in in here even I don't have I cannot find R lower bound lower or bound upper bound. Upper bound, upper bound right? Right? Okay. So okay. now that that is the definition of bounded set. Okay. So okay. suppose you have a function. Okay. Now, now consider, suppose you have a function from A to R, right? You have a function. So once you have a function, you have a range, right? You have a range for this function, right? You have a range. And what is this range is subset of what? Codomain. Codomain. Co what, what, is, what is the codomain here? Uh, codomain uh, R. R, right? So this range is a subset of R. Okay. So when I can say that my function is bounded, if the range of the function is bounded. Okay. If, if, so this is a set, right? Now you know what, what, now you know the meaning of bounded set, right? This is a set. This is a set. This is a set inside R. Okay. This is a subset of R. So if this range of F is bounded, if the range of f is bounded, then I say f is bounded, right? 
so so for example so so for example so in that case what i can say so this basically means f is f is f is bounded on a okay that is that is the meaning of f is bounded so here uh, it's written right f is unbounded function on r right right okay. so so that means okay so 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 basically i am since the the domain of the function is r okay so that's why this this r is coming here okay so when my function is from a to r okay and it's a bounded function then in that case i write f is a bound f is a bounded function on a okay so this a basically uh, a basically represent the domain of the function okay so any doubt till now uh, regarding the definition of the function uh, definition of the bounded function no sir right no, sir no, no, no. Hmm. this bounded on domain and bounded on r is not a range is uh, limited means it's bounded function that's understood but what is bounded on domain that's english part is not getting no clear. no no there, there is nothing so this is f is a function from a to r right a is the domain yes sir right so that basically so when i'm saying that f is a bounded function on a that means f is a function from r to r eh, sorry a to r which is bounded function that's all okay i am not saying anything new so i have so when i am saying a p j bounded function a that basically means a p j function from a to r which is a bounded function okay uh, sir like uh, in in a question no there are two options like hmm. tan is a uh, unbounded function on r hmm. and second uh, i'll come to that I, okay so i'll come to that but now you just tell me about this statement uh, that's what it is related to this like huh. uh, when a function is bounded or unbounded is determined by whether it, the range is bounded or not but right. how how you are getting the range the range is depend on the domain right correct sir so that's why i am saying so what see this range okay you this range okay right i have a range here and uh -huh. how, how i actually am getting this range what is the definition of this range this range is what f of x so that x is inside a right This, so this range depends on this a right if i okay. if i change my a okay huh. if i take a, a is a is a singleton set suppose a is 1 huh. okay then it's always bounded set because i will get only f of 1 there is single okay. element but if a is something different then i may get a different range right so the range what i'm i'm basically saying this range has to be a bounded set right and this range depend depends on this this domain a understood sir but so sometimes that, domain could be entire real line no yeah so in, in that point. case in that case you, you you so that's why here the whoever asked this question so you can say right this 1 by x is a unbounded function on r why this r is coming here because if you consider this function f of x is equal to 1 by x it's a function from r right huh. so here the domain is r right correct sir so that's why this r is coming in this question okay so so when i am saying that my function is is bounded or unbounded on on a that means the domain of so i am considering that function uh whose do, domain is is a okay, okay sir. sir it means domain could be uh, finite or infinite you yeah. have to consider what is the range on this yes. domain with respect to that domain yes correct okay, hmm. okay so okay. so for example uh, let's say okay let me give few examples of bounded function so if i consider this function f of x is equal to sin x right so it's a it's a function from r to r right and you know the graph of this function so okay like hello sir so okay sorry this is badly drawn 
and this part you know this is 1 and this is minus 1 right so so you know that this f of x okay the f of x this always inside between 1 and minus 1 correct yes sir so so the range of this function okay if you consider the range the range of this function so this when i am writing f of x so so the range of this function is always lies always lie inside this minus 1 and 1 right so so in that case this is my probably this is my r and this is my s so so sin x is a bounded function Okay. okay. And similarly, you can say that cos x is also a bounded function. But, but tan so, x is not. Yeah, tan x is not. But uh, but if I take, uh, let's say, e power x, okay, what is the graph of this function? Keep incrementing after x1. Right. So, if, if x goes to infinity, this f of x also? goes to infinity infinity so so in that case i i cannot so uh, certainly i can say that f of x is always greater than zero okay greater than or equal to zero but i'm I cannot get a r s here okay so in that case i will i can say that this function is unbounded, is unbounded function on what r on r because the domain this i can treat this function from r to r okay so, so in this case, this this function, a, this this is an unbounded function on if if I consider f of x equal to e power x, this is an unbounded function on r. Okay, so, but the thing is, okay, suppose I am considering the same function as I as someone was ask, asking. Okay, so you consider this same function f of x, okay, uh, e power x. Now what I will do, I will change the domain of the function. I will not consider this function. So here what I have done, I have considered considered this function from R to R. So instead of considering this from R to R, let me consider this function from minus infinity, zero, okay, to R. Now my domain is different, okay. I am not considering this, this function from, from whole R to R, okay. I am simply considering some part of the function, okay. My domain, now my domain is slightly restrictive. Okay, so do you think now, do you think the range of the function is bounded or unbounded? It will bounded, sir. Right, because what I actually I'm doing here, now I am I'm, I'm simply ignoring this part. Yes, sir. Right? It will keep remain on negative side. Not, okay, so it's not negative side, since still in positive side, but okay. negative side means you are below x axis. Yes. Oh, oh, okay, so okay, it is on the above part. Yeah. So, okay, so, so, with with rest in this domain, okay, my f of x is greater than uh, certainly it's greater than equal to zero, but it's less than uh, less than or equal to one. Okay, so again you have to you have to differentiate between these two cases here i am considering from r to r here i am considering minus infinity to zero okay so so now i can say my f is bounded bounded on minus this infinity. so so this concept of bound, boundedness and unboundedness of, of a function it's completely depend on the on the domain okay so so when i'm saying that f is f is bounded on a that means that means f as a function from a to r is bounded okay so okay let's come back to the to to our original question so basically what you have asked 1 by e power x okay see 1 by e power x is a bounded function uh, uh, is a bounded function or not, right? So, so this is, so now what is your opinion about this function? Do you think this is a bounded or unbounded function on R? Unbounded. This is a unbounded function, why? 
because the domain is from R to R. Hmm. So then, uh, and we are the thing. Uh, um, the range from minus infinity to infinity. No, that see, see again, like you are making a mistake. See, see, e of x is always greater than equal to zero, right? Yes, yeah, sir. So it should be okay. It should be greater than zero. Okay. But again, I can write greater than or equal to zero, right? See, e if e power x is greater than zero, okay, that means one by e power x is also greater than zero. Right? Yes, sir. So then, then the range of this function cannot be minus infinity to infinity, right? The range okay. of function is always greater than, uh, so the fun value of the function is always greater than zero. Then how come minus infinity to infinity will be your range? Okay. See, minus infinity to infinity is your core domain. Okay. Yeah, tell me how you can say whether this function is bounded or not. As we are not getting any upper bounded. See, uh, the thing is, okay, so. Sir, is it because the range cannot be less than zero? It will be bounded. No, I am asking about the range. Okay, so see the range. Uh, one thing I know that the, the there is a lower limit for the range. Okay, f of x, f of x has a lower limit. I can say that f of x is always greater than or equal to zero. What about a upper limit? Can I get a upper limit? If I have no. a upper limit, then I can say that this function is bounded. Okay, so the only question is whether this function has a upper limit or not. That no, you need to. Say, no, sir. No. It no. is an exponential. Yeah. See, the thing is, okay, you try to understand 1 by e power x. Okay. So, you know that if x is going towards uh, minus infinity, right? If x is going towards minus infinity, then e power x will go towards what? See the graph. Yeah, infinity. Not infinity. It will go when x is going towards minus infinity, right? Zero. Then e uh, power yeah, x sir. go power zero. E zero. power x will then where this one by e power x will opposite uh, go to infinity. Infinity, infinity, infinity right? So 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 the thing is when when x for this function when x is going towards minus infinity, this f of x will go towards zero. plus in plus infinity. Not zero. See, just now I said, right? One by e power x. This is my function. Okay. Not this one. So then it has, so this function has no upper bound, right? So, okay. so, so that means this function is not, not bounded, not bounded on R. That is really important because I am considering this function from R to R. Clear uh, now. Now, yeah. uh, sir, uh, huh. sir, can we say that uh, if the function doesn't have an upper bound, hmm. then it is unbounded? Yeah, that is what is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and, and sir, what, if sir, it just a minute, let one later. minute. Yeah, let me discuss with sir, please. Hmm. Hmm. And sir, if uh, it uh, sir, one more thing here, you have written f uh, minus infinity, the square bracket. Sir, we never use square bracket for infinity, right? For infinity and minus infinity. So, this okay, one is okay. bothering no, no, me. No. Yeah. no, no, this is incorrect. Yeah, yeah this one. Uh, yeah, yeah. I this, is, this, this is incorrect, whatever I have written. Okay. There, yeah. So, sir, if it has a upper limit, uh, hmm. I mean, uh, like zero is the upper limit, but we hmm. don't have the lower limit. No, this, but we can say, but we can say that uh, no, it no, no, is just, bounded. Just a minute, just a minute. Uh, zero, zero here is a lower limit, not an upper limit. No, sir. In that uh, minus infinity to infinity. This is just a domain. Okay. So the domain is here. Uh, it is bounded. The domain with is bounded with, with respect to this domain. I am saying. Okay. So this is a different question. Just let me. 
So this is a different question. Uh, so I want to understand it in general. If it is, uh, it has an upper um, upper um, limit. So no, then... uh, just just let me tell you. This is this is a completely different question. Yeah. What is what okay. is your doubt in this question? Uh, no, sir. Uh, uh -huh. Not particular this question. I just want to know the in general, like uh, if it has a upper limit for any function. So if it hmm. has a uh, upper limit, if then it, it has... is. Uh, then if it has both upper limit and as well as lower limit, okay, then you can say that the function is bounded. So for example, okay. what actually I have done here, here, see the, the difference uh, is, so now you consider this function. Okay. So, so this is a uh, question. So now you consider this function R to R, f of x equal to e power x, right? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So if you consider this function, now mm -hmm. you draw Not the graph, it. right? Yes, this, this is mm -hmm. the graph of e power x. Yes. Now this function is going. Uh, uh, if you consider the range of the function, right? F of x. F so of range x is going to infinity. Yes. Yeah. So so you have you know that this f of x is greater than zero, right? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. But here you don't have any upper range. Upper range. Mm -hmm. okay. You don't have any upper range, right? Yes. So so that's why this function is is unbounded on mm -hmm. r so why actually i am writing here r okay no it's unbounded on r okay. yeah so why actually i am writing only because the here the domain of the function is r mm -hmm. okay that that is the only reason i am writing that this function is unbounded on r because i can i can consider this same function with respect mm -hmm. to some different uh, domain right so that yes, is sir. what I have I have done in the next question. Now what I am doing here, I am considering mm -hmm. the same function with respect to again. I made a mistake here. Yeah, here also yes. Yeah. So I am considering this this as a function from minus infinity to. Uh, so here instead Three. of r, my domain is different, right? Okay. So if I consider my function with respect to this domain, okay, mm -hmm. what will be the graph of this function? Uh, so, so this is domain right minus yeah, this infinity is, to zero. yeah minus infinity to zero so so precisely so x, I'll, so get will... a, I'll get a uh, graph like this right correct yes sir so so now with respect to this domain my mm -hmm. value of the function is precisely in between this zero to one zero to one yes so i have a up, lower bound as well as upper bound upper bound mm -hmm. so 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 with respect to this domain, we I have, have, it is bounded. It is bounded. So that's why I have written yes. f is bounded on this interval. Okay. So this okay, has, okay. so, so the only reason I'm writing here, because this is the domain of the function. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, when you can say your function is bounded only when you have both uh, upper bound, okay, for the range as well as for the lower bound. Okay. For example, if I, so see here, you, you can see, right. You have a lower bound, but you don't have a upper bound, right? So that's why this is unbound. Similarly, I can get some function. Maybe let's say, uh, f of x equal to minus of x square, right? I can consider this function from R to R, right? So, so this function is always what? It's always less than or equal to zero. Yes, sir. But it has no lower, right? You cannot get a lower bound for this function. No, sir. Right. So, so here in this case, I have a upper bound, but I don't have a lower bound. So that's why f is not. It's not bounded. Bounded on. No. Okay, so now any any doubt from this topic? No, no sir. sir. Thank no, you. Sir. No, okay, sir. Thank you. Asit, you have any doubt? Uh, yes, yeah, sir. From the same activity, 7.1, question yeah. number 11. 7.1, question number 11. I guess I have this. Okay, 11. Yeah. Sir. Hmm. Uh, hmm. The lower bound and upper bound, uh, I think uh, I want to ask something there. Hmm. 
Yeah, tell me. What is your doubt? Uh, sir, in previous slide. Mm -hmm. Where? Yeah. This, uh, this one. Uh, e to the power x. Uh, yeah, we have two e to power x. This is also yeah, e yeah, yeah. Uh, f, f x is equals to e to the power x. Yeah, here in in this uh, in this section. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, here lower bound uh, lower bound is not defined, right? Uh, where? Uh, in e to the power x. No, lower bound is defined, right? Zero. You have a lower bound. That is zero. This, if I consider this function, f of x, f of x is always greater than or equal to zero, right? Okay. So that that means I have a lower bound. Okay. So I have a lower bound for the range of the function. My range, whatever the value of f of x is, one can one thing I can guarantee that this f of x x f of x is always greater than or equal to zero. Okay. So that's why this is the this is the lower bound. But I don't have a upper bound. Right. If you keep increasing the value of x, okay, then this okay. f of x will increase, right? It will go to till infinity, right? So that means I cannot, I cannot, I cannot bound my f of x. Okay, I, I don't have a upper bound. Okay, if you increase the value of x, this will go towards plus infinity. So you cannot, you cannot bound this range uh, by 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 interval. Sir, uh, uh, and lower bound and upper bound, I think uh, uh, these uh, these terms can be uh, uh, said as in in theorem and supremum. But why you want to go there? Just I have read somewhere. No, why you want to? Yeah, may, yeah. There, there is a concept of supremum and infimum, but why you want to go there? Simply you treat it as uh, there are in some occasion there are different. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, I I forgot. Yeah, someone asked me some question, right? Yeah. Mm. Sir. Yeah. So okay, activity seven point one, uh, question number eleven, right? uh yeah so anyone uh, anyone wants to help me in this question you can uh, you can tell me what what is the answer of uh, question number 11 for option 1 whether option 1 is correct or not if correct then why if incorrect also then why so so uh, this is 7.1 question number 11 so I am considering a function f of x, which is basically x plus 1 plus x. And so I am considering this function with respect to some different, different domain. Okay. So first what for option 1, okay. Option 1, for option 1, I am treating this, this f of x equal to 1 plus x as a function from r minus 0 to r and in option 1 is asking whether if I consider this function from r minus 0 to r whether this function is injective or not. Any idea how I can solve this question? The question is clear or still it's not clear to you what actually it's asking. Sir, as you told about like x1 is equal to x2, then f of x1 is equal to f of x2, hmm. then it will be injective. This is injective. Do you think no, this is? Hmm. No, no, I'm telling the way if f of x1 is equal to f of x2 hmm. uh, and x1 is also equal to x2, then it will be injective. Otherwise, hmm. it will not. Hmm. So do you it's think this is injective? injective? Yeah, no, sir. It is not injective. No, it is in... not injective, sir. Yeah, why? Yeah, uh, I, one I... by x, one by x one and x one, you will get the same value. Yeah, correct, 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 correct. Yeah, someone. Yeah. So basically, someone just said one by for one by x and x, you will get the same value. For for example, if you take f of two, this is two plus one by two, right? And I'll get the same thing if I consider one by two. Okay. Yes, sir. So, and and one thing you have to make sure 
this two, the two I'm taking from the domain, right? This is inside my domain, whatever domain I have considered here, this is inside my domain. And this one is also in, inside my domain. Okay. So I have two things, two different things inside my domain for which I'm getting the same output. Okay. In that case, my function is not injective. Okay. okay uh, this is for option uh, one. Okay. I'll, I'll probably I'll do maybe two, two more options. Okay. Sir, I we, can. Sir, we also fall like that now. X square plus one divided by X and uh, X square plus one is quadratic equation. So. Sorry. Uh, he is saying he is saying that by solving it like quadratic equation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then quadratic equation are always many one, so it is not injective. This is not a quadratic equation. When you, when we solve it, come x plus one by x. No, how this become a quadratic equation? Sir, by taking LCM. What is the definition of quadratic equation? Sir, not I'm not saying like that, but uh, when you solve this, fx is equal to x plus one by x by LCM. It will be x square plus one by x. Yeah. Again, like so, don't say that this is this is a quadratic equation. This is sort of a rational function. Yeah, yeah, this is rational, but just like that quadratic equation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so the same thing. Uh, uh, say again, I am considering the same function, but with respect to some different uh, domain. So now what I'm trying to do, I'm considering this as a function from A to R. So now what about this, this one? It will be injective, sir. Yeah. So, uh, why? Because uh, for every input, we will get an, uh, different output. Yes. But that is correct. But how you are going to prove it for every input? R is not there in the domain. Yeah, that again, that is correct, but that is not a proof. You are basically saying, yeah, so this, this argument will not work. Okay. So that is what you are saying. Okay. But I'm saying, yeah. So then certainly if I can certainly if this argument uh, doesn't work, then I may have some different argument for which I can say that this function is not injected. You have to prove it, right? If sir, we can saying, sir we can do like uh, x yeah. one minute i just did that um, like x1 plus 1 by x1 is equal to x2 plus 1 by x2 hmm. okay hmm. yeah now you take the lcm x square plus 1 by x And there y square plus one by y. Hmm. And now we can cross multiply y x square plus y. Okay, so this is what you are trying to do. Okay, yeah, so yeah. x. Uh, now we can cancel it up and then we can get x is equal to y. Okay, so here you will get y square x yeah. plus x, right? Yes, yes. Okay, now then. It then how, so now how, how um, we are going to cancel one minute um, see x square just a, uh, let, let me tell you uh, just mm -hmm. a minute see one thing you have to make sure that uh, so one thing you have to use that you are inside natural number okay right that you have to use because see just now you saw right this function is not injective when i am considering mm -hmm. from from this set to this set Right. So, yeah. so somewhere you have to use that you are inside this natural number. Okay. So simply you cannot cancel it. Okay. Yeah. So, Sir, uh, if you factorize when you get x y uh, into x minus y is equal to x minus x y into x minus y is equal to x minus y. So you can take x minus y common and then you'll get two roots x y equal just, to one. Just a minute. Uh, what what you what you want me to do? Just just tell me one. Okay. one. Common from x square y and y square x. Yes, he she is saying to take common from these equations. Correct. So I'll get yeah. this one, right? So then what I can do? I can take common x y from here, right? 
So what I will get? X minus y, I guess. Uh, minus one into x minus y. Hmm. Equal to zero. So you'll get two results: x y equal to one, and x equal to y. X y equal to one is not possible for natural, like natural numbers. Right. So so the only thing, yeah. So now you are correct. The only thing, this is not possible for natural numbers. Okay. Until unless x and y are same. Right, right, sir. So x y, x comma y minus one is not not possible. This is not possible until unless x is equal to y equal to one. Okay, and from here also for for both the cases you are getting x equal to y, right? So 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 basically what you are proving uh, you are proving if f of x is equals to f of y right that means x equal to y so this is one of the different uh, interpretation of one one function and one more thing actually you can you can actually uh, easily is, uh, prove that this is not a uh, one one function see uh, See, if, if x is not equal to y, right? If x is not equal to y, that means either x is less than y or x is greater than y, right? So without loss of generality, you assume that x is greater than y, right? So if x is greater than y, then x plus 1 by x is greater than y plus 1 by y, right? So this is your f of x. And this is your f of y. So, so if you have two different x, uh, different x comma y, then you are getting two different f of x and f of y. Okay, that means your function is injective. Okay. Okay, sir. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I I basically I proved two options. So I am going to do one more option from this question, or like shall I stop now? Uh, at, for this question, you can you can you can proceed similarly, right? Sir, can you solve the one codomain uh, option? Last option, sir. Last option. Okay, last option. Okay, so uh, you now what you do now you consider this. Uh, um, consider this function a from where to here. The domain is z minus zero, and the co-domain is q. Right? Right, sir. Again, this is easy. Like, right? what you need to do? You so it's basically asking whether this function is uh, surjective or not. Right? Right, sir. So that means what? For each, for each value. Of Q, you must have a pre image. Right? Mm. So, do you think 0 has a pre image? No. Then done. No, right? sir. So, do you think 1 x plus 1 by x can be 0? Is it possible? No, no sir. X can't be 0. No, x can, look, x plus 1 by x cannot be 0. Okay. For G, yeah, yeah, yeah. X can X can't be zero. There is a different uh, hmm. meaning. It because, is not. It is also not defined at zero. Okay. Hmm. The only, only thing so what actually I want to sh show that this function is not surjective. And what in particular what I am saying zero is not inside the range of this f, right? So this is enough, okay, right? So. If I, if I, if I can show that zero is not inside the range. Okay, that means my range of f, range of f is not equal to q, right? Right, right sir. So that, that so so for that I need to show that x plus one by x cannot be zero. So if you uh, if you consider this uh, equality, what you will get x square plus one by x, by x equal to zero. zero. That means what you, you are getting x square x. plus one equal to zero which is and, not possible right, right? 
x will give if we like, continue x will give two values one and minus one not one and minus one it will give you minus i and i okay it's imaginary okay okay sir see if x is a real then x square is always positive okay okay sir okay any okay so let me take the next question uh Uh, Asit, uh, this part is clear to you? Yeah. Okay, fine. Okay, so uh, if you have any other question, then probably I can take later. Okay, so maybe okay. let me move to the next person. Uh, Daras Pratap Singh? Daras Pratap Singh? Uh, Raj, Raj Deepak? Raj Deepak. Yes, sir, I'm audible. Hmm. Sir, I just have to say, sir, can you uh, summarize this session from now? Because, sir, we can also ask doubts in uh, office hours. And, sir, for me, this chapter is a little bit difficult, sir, to understand the concepts. Can you summarize it? Summarize. Actually, the week summary is already done by, sir. Yeah. So, uh, one Saturday, sir. It is already week summary, week summary, seven summary is already done. Okay, I'm going to check it. Okay, so, so the, uh, yeah, that is possible. But again, if you have some conceptual doubt, you can ask, like I can start explaining the concept as well. Yes, sir. I'm facing to approach a uh, practice assignment question number two. How to deal with sequence questions? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so some already it's given, right? You uh, so you have a so it's already given that you have a sequence A, right? Yes. Right. It's already given. Uh, this is converges to what? Converges one. to one. Yeah. Yeah. It is already given. Okay. This is given. So, what you need to do? You need to find. The limit, the limit of this of sequence. new sequence, right? Yeah. What is that? N by 2 by N plus 13 times N by 1 by N, right? Yeah, minus 1. Minus 1. Right? So, so, and what is your target now? You need to find the limit of this PN, right? Yes. Now you tell me what is what is the limit of this sequence? If you know the limit of this sequence, what will be the limit of this sequence? What is this? N by right? Yeah. So N is nothing but limit. Square, right? Yes. And what is that? What what is what is this thing? Now what is this thing? You know you know the value of the of the thing which is inside the bracket, right? What is that? Uh, I don't know, so can you tell me? One 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 yeah one. Mm -hmm. n to the power 1 by n1. So you are getting 1 square, which is 1, right? Yeah. So this is what? 1. Similarly, for, for this, what you will get? What? 13. 13. And this is, you have a constant sequence here. Minus right? 1. 
right yeah so you are what actually you are doing you are basically using the the rules of limit right so if you know the rules of limit then you just need to apply it correctly okay okay sir yeah okay so anything else from your side no sir okay uh next is hamid hello hamid are you here abhishek yes sir yeah what is your doubt abhishek yes uh, i have a doubt in activity 7.4 mm -hmm. uh, question number 9 and uh, 11 first of all 7.4 question number 9 hmm so just tell me the way what should i proceed then i will follow up the steps so so it is given you have two sequence right a n and b n and and this two sequence they satisfy this condition and what is that condition p n right right sir and a limit is also given that limit and tends to infinity b n equal to 0 hmm. so <clears throat> so this you can you can write in some un, different way what in what way you can write this i don't know sir see uh, if mod of x is less than a mm -hmm. then what you can write x lies between sir i think minus a to a yes what sir right right sir. sir yeah so so now what you can write uh so now you can write my this a in your sequence a in right it's basically between bn and minus bn bn right right so so you know as n tends to infinity this bn is going towards zero right yes sir it is given so so that means uh it is just like a sandwich rule sir if the bn tends to limit n tends to infinity and bn equal to 0 if minus bn also gives 0 then an will also be 0 yes 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 okay. that is what uh, basically see uh, the thing is okay like now what you can do you can uh, see if bn is going towards 0 then its modulus will also go towards 0 right right sir right sir so now if you take n towards infinity then what you will get this is going towards zero right yes this yes, is sir. also going towards zero okay then whatever left in the middle okay it this will, will also, also 
move will to also zero. go to zero. That is precisely yeah. Sometimes this this thing is sandwiched in between two uh, things which which are going towards zero. Okay, sir. Okay. And the eleventh question. Uh, just tell the second option. How can we proceed with them? Other way, I will try myself. See, uh, before that, tell me how you check with your sequence is increasing or decreasing. Oh. Uh, can I start? Yeah. Tell me the definition. Yeah, definition of let's say uh, decreasing sequence. Yes, sir. Uh, if a n plus one is greater than equal to a n, where all element is uh, when a n plus one is greater than equal to a n. Hmm. And all the elements uh, uh, n belongs to natural. Hmm. So this is a decreasing sequence. Do you think? No, sir. In increasing, sir. Yeah, this is increasing, right? So for de decreasing sequence, what you need to write? A n plus so, one should be smaller than equal to a n. A n plus one should be smaller than a n, right? And right, when this is possible? Uh, uh, when a n minus minus a n uh, plus one, plus one uh, smaller than equal to zero is greater than or equal to zero. See, you are come taking a n plus one to this side, right? Then mm -hmm. you will get a zero. So this is greater than. Right? Oh, oh, okay. I made a mistake in writing my formula. Okay, so this is the decreasing sequence, right? And okay, sir. similarly for increasing sequence, what you will get a n plus one hmm. is greater than a n, right? Right, sir. See, increasing means you are when you are going along your uh, along with your sequence, then the value of the sequence is increasing. Okay, and decreasing means when you are going along with your sequence, the value is decreasing. Okay. So, so first you are you are getting a n, then you are getting a n plus one, you are getting a n plus two. So increasing means first plus you have a n, then it the next step it will increase the value. That means a n plus one is greater than the previous one. Plus then one again it will increase. A n plus two is greater greater than this previous one. Okay, this is the increasing. And decreasing mm -hmm. means it it will decrease. Okay, you have a n, then again it will decrease. That means this one is less than the previous one okay this one is the less than the previous one that is that is less than or equal okay. that is the definition of decreasing right sir understood so this is minus minus a n greater than equal to zero this hmm. is increasing function yeah so okay. so what is your option two uh, it is minus 1 by 6n minus 5. Minus 1 by 6n uh, minus 5. Minus 5. Okay, this is your a n, right? right now, you, so. now, what is a n plus 1? Uh, we will add 1 in this equation like minus 1 upon 6n minus 5 plus 1. 6n hmm. minus 5. Okay, uh, then we will take the LCM. Oh, 6 n minus 5 plus 1 uh, plus 1 uh, this is what we are doing now an plus 1 see see this is see the again like you are see a n plus 1 is different a mm -hmm. n plus 1 is different oh okay okay it is uh, adding a, we are adding into n Okay, okay. Uh, then it will be minus one upon six n hmm. plus one minus five. Six n n plus one uh, minus five. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. See what actually you are doing. You are you are evaluating the n plus one th term of your sequence, right? And for that, what do you need to do? So this is what? A n plus one. This is the n plus one 
term of your sequence. <laughs> right, sir. And for that, what you need to do when you are so what is a five? What is a five? So you have to substitute five in plus of n, right? Right, sir. What is a six? For a six, you have to substitute six in plus six. Place of. So when when n. you so when you have to compute a n plus one. Then what you need to do? You need to substitute n plus one in place of n, right? And that right, is what I am right, doing. Sir. So this is six n right, sir. Uh, plus six minus n. five, uh, and this is what minus one by six n minus mm. uh, plus one. Right? Plus one. Plus one. Now, uh, now you compute a n plus one minus a n. What is uh, okay. what is a n plus one minus n? So minus one upon six n plus one, and we will minus minus one upon six n. Yeah, it will be plus six n minus five. Minus five, right? Okay. Now, what will be the answer here? So you will get some some. Thing right, six n plus one and six n minus five. Okay, so then here what you will get? Uh, uh, excuse me, sir. Can minus I one. Just a minute. Let me complete it. I'll come. Yeah, uh, okay. In the above section, I will get minus six n plus five. Hmm. Uh, and uh, plus six n plus one. Hmm. Minus six n and six n cancel. Five plus one six. It will be greater than equal to zero. So this is so six is positive, and here below in the denominator you have something positive, right? So right, this sir. is this is greater than equal to zero, right? So okay. so if this is greater than equal to zero, then you are in, you are in the second this place, right? That means your sequence is increasing. Okay, sir. Clear. Okay, sir. I am making the mistake. I am doing a n plus one. I am okay. adding one in the into whole. No, that is that is wrong, right? So you are yeah, yes. you are computing n n plus one mm. term of the sequence, and how you can get it? I understood now. Yes. Like we are jumping into one step. If we are on one, then we will go to two. Yes. Yes. Okay, sir. Okay. okay. Second term. Mm -hmm. Just a second, just a second, mm -hmm. uh, because my doubt is regarding this only. Yes, please. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm a bit confused. A n plus one. So here n plus one is a subscript, isn't it? Mm -hmm. This one is a subscript. So how do we actually do that? As six times n plus one and six n plus six min. Can that be equated? We just multiply. We just multiplied. Uh, sorry. Six n plus six. Okay, so just a minute. Let 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 me. Uh, no, what? Yes, was, sir. sorry. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, please, can you repeat your question? So uh, I agree See, that a n, a n plus one uh, should be the next element or next term of mm -hmm. a n, right? Mm -hmm. In the sequence. Mm -hmm. So here, I mean, that is what it indicates: n plus one term. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but then when we apply that, we are actually multiplying n plus one to six. Mm -hmm. There, I'm, I'm, I, I may be wrong. I'm, I'm confused actually. Yeah, just a minute. So uh, I guess I have uh, said. Uh, Already said, so the sequence, right? This is uh, one by okay. It's nothing to do with the original sequence. Let me write six n uh, plus five, right? Okay. So how 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 you compute the terms of the sequence? So this what is this a n a n basically means this is the nth term of the sequence, right? Okay. Of the sequence, right? Yeah. And how how you compute this a n by substituting n here, right? That's right. So so similarly, if if I want to comp compute a one, right? Then I just yeah. have to substitute one in place of n, right? This will okay. give me two. If I yeah. compute a two, right? Then what okay. I need to I need to substitute two in place of n, right? Correct. Correct. And if I have to compute a n. I yeah. just need to substitute n in place of n, right? Okay. So, so then, if I have to compute a n plus one, then plus one. then I I have to substitute n plus one n plus one instead of in place of n, right? Correct. 
so yeah. so if i if i substitute n plus 1 okay uh -huh. n plus 1 right yeah then i will get this thing right oh but you are multiplying n plus 1 to 6 but yeah because 6 6 times n right is it 6 times n or uh, subscript i mean that's a subscript isn't it no like, no that is it's just 6 times n right this is 6 times n this is a multiplication right 6 times n plus 5 right and this is what i am doing i'm so when you are when i'm computing this a n plus 1 okay uh -huh. this n plus 1 by the same logic see when you are computing a2 in place of n you are putting 2 right correct correct so then when i have to uh, compute a n plus 1 then i just have to substitute n N uh, that I understood. See the substituting part, I understood. So then where I am getting log this when you multiply six to n plus one. I mean six times n plus one. So wh what is this? What is this? This six n. What is this? Oh, this is. Six oh, is that six? Oh, it's not that n is not the subscript. No, this is how. Oh, all right. Then I mistook it. Okay. See, I, I was assuming six n as a subscript. No, then this has no meaning. Okay, see. Yeah, that is where I got stuck. Like, I mean, how can that be done? Like, okay, and I understand this now. Okay, all yeah. right. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Abhishek, yeah. Uh, do you have any more doubts? Yes, sir. Just in seven point five, question number four. Seven point five. Question number four, sir. Sir, excuse me, sir. Hmm. Sir, the, the rest of uh, the rest sequence of problems uh, uh, to be solved manually by putting the uh, formula of n plus one or n. Yeah, you yes, can sir. you can uh, just do it by separate. formula of increasing and decreasing hmm. separately for every uh, for every problem. Yes, yes, correct. Yeah. Okay. You you just need to check like you need to find n, you need to find n plus one, and you need to subtract. If this holds increasing if uh, this this holds uh, then decrease okay sir yeah 7.5 question number four sir yeah what what is your doubt here i don't know what the question is asking for it's asking uh, to find the limit uh, then i don't know how to proceed with that just solve any any of the examples. How, how I, you solve question number three? Uh, how I solve like uh, limit of x fx uh, uh, limit of fx x tends to two uh, hmm. minus one. It it is not possible. Hmm. Uh, like on the third option, uh, limit of x tends to zero point five. Uh, it will leads to minus one because it is in the range. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, uh just like that so uh, uh left limit at zero is uh, x zero Similarly, you should be able to solve this one also okay so then let me uh, so your question your function is f of x equal to uh, i will a, tell sir x, x if x x if x smaller than equal to two hmm. five if x greater than two Right, this is your function. Yes, sir. Okay, can you draw now? We can easily draw the function, right? The only point is this is two, right? Mm -hmm. And if x is less than two, uh, less than or equal to two, then the value of the function is two, right? So you will get this straight line. Sir, right. it is question number three. No, it is four. Yes. So you will get uh, this point, right? Okay. This at two, the value of the function is two. Okay. Right, right, sir. Right. So let me slightly increase this thing. Okay. So. <coughs> Let's say this is your five. Okay. And after two, right? Okay. 
right right sir after because after two the value of the function basically it's two five sorry so you will get a uh, straight line parallel to x axis right okay so then what is what actually uh, which option is making is is basically it's creating problem for you. so what you need to do for in the first option what you need to do you need to find the so the limit is two here because after that we will jump uh, st three steps above what what do so limit so what is the left hand limit at two left hand limit is uh, just this part like it will be the same for two left hand limit x no left hand uh, limit at x equal to two i am asking at two it will be x sir. two right it, it is saying in the question like if x is greater smaller than equal to 2 then it will be x i don't know what you are saying but whatever you are saying is completely wrong so <clears throat> so what i am asking what is the left hand limit of this function at 2 this is my question and you are basically so saying this, a, this is x okay this certainly this doesn't make any sense so so what actually you, so what basically this means what what basically what is the meaning of this this term Sir, f of 2 is equal to 2 in in place of x we put 2 minus h and we find out limit sorry in a, in function, sir, in function, uh, if limit x tended to 2 minus, so it means uh, here 2 minus, no? Yeah, it is to to the left side. Yeah, so we put uh, 2 minus h. Yeah, so again, like, yeah, certainly 2 minus s, but you have to understand what, what is actually the meaning of this 2 minus s. Don't simply say that 2 minus s. So what, yeah, but, see, uh, yeah, so let me let me repeat. Uh, let me uh, say the answer. Okay, so what basically I'm, what you are trying to say here, two minus, right? That means you are coming to two, right? From the, from the left side of two, left right? side. So when you are coming to to this two from the left side of the, of side of this two, you you want to check where your function f of x is going, right? Right, sir. That is that is what you want to find, right? So when you are coming from the left hand left hand side of two, you can see your function is coming towards what? Two. Two, right? Right, sir. It's approaching. It's actually approaching towards two. If you come closer and closer and closer to two, the value of the function will come closer and closer to two. this point, right? Which is exactly at two. This is precisely two. Okay. What about your right hand limit? For every x which is greater than 2, f of x is equal to 5. Yeah, that is correct. But I am asking what, what is your right hand limit? Yeah, you are correct. Uh, uh, right hand limit, I think, sir, 5. 5, yes, sir. Yes. So, as you can see, like, see, when you are coming closer and closer to 2, right? When you are mm -hmm. coming closer and closer to two, still you are on this line, right? X equal to five. Sorry, yes. you are basically here. Right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. It's a constant function. Yeah, constant function. So it doesn't matter how you come closer and close to two from the right hand side. Okay, the value mm -hmm. of the function is always five, right? Right, so, sir. So this is five. Okay. So your left hand limit and right hand limit they're different for this function, right? Okay, sir. That yes, that sir. means the limit of the function at x equal to 2 doesn't exist. Clear? Uh, what are you saying, sir? The left hand limit and right hand limit, they're different for this function at x equal to 2, right? Right, sir. So hmm. they don't, limit does not, uh, yeah, doesn't yeah. exist. Yeah, so these two things are different. So that's why your limit doesn't exist. Right, sir.
but in the answer sir they are saying right limit exist at x equal to 2 oh so it will be 5 so both are different so the function... right right limit exist right it's 5 Yes, okay. sir. Left right and left both are. Left, yeah, left limit also exists. This is two, but right. they are not same. So they are not same. Yeah, that's why the, the limit, limit for limit for function is not existing. Yes, yes. Limit of the function at x equal to two doesn't exist. Okay, okay, okay sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, then Pradeep Prad so, uh, Pravidya, yeah. Yes, sir. same activity, sir, but question two. Seven point five. Yes, sir. Hmm. So I was not able to solve it. So, so could you please help me? Just a minute. Uh, this your uh, f of x is x square minus x square plus two. So minus x square plus two into x cube plus three. Right. So, yes. Sir. So you need to find the limit, right? Limit is yes, given, sir. Limit of f of x that is x tends to one. Yes, sir. So we can just uh, simply by putting uh, one into the place of x can get the value because yes. it is not going to be uh, some infinite or undefined number. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, uh, yeah, uh, so can you see? Okay, so uh, what what will be the limit of of uh, uh, if I ask you this? What is the limit of this thing? So one cube plus two is three. So as as x tends to one, okay. This mm -hmm. so as x tends to one, x cube plus two will go towards three, right? Yes, sir. So this okay. is three, right? Yes, sir. Then what about this part? If I write li as limit x tends to one, so it's one. This this will go towards one, right? Yes, sir. and this function is nothing but it's the product of these two functions, right? Oh, oh okay, sir. So, okay, so now, yes, sir. now you can you can simply write this. This is nothing but okay. Since both the limit exists, so you can you can write this this limit as a product of these two limits, right? And yes, sir. Okay. This is three times. Okay, I guess this is one times three. Yes. Again, this this is same. Yes, uh, yes, I'll solve it. Yeah, mm. understood, sir. Yes. So uh, one more, sir. Uh, Seven point four sixth one, sir. Seven point four. Hmm. So, a you have a sequence. Yes, sir. You have a sequence, and the limit of the sequence is one, right? Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. It's asking. Limit of this sequence, right? Yes, sir. So one thing, do you know that limit of a sequence? If limit of a sequence is a, right? Let's say limit of a sequence is. Suppose you have a sequence, and limit of the sequence is let's say a. Okay, then the limit of all the subsequence of the sequence is also a. Yes, sir. Okay. Right. Yes, sir. If the limit of the sequence n is a, mm. then the limit of all the subsequence of the sequence is also a. Yes, right? sir. Yes. So, so if a n is a sequence, what about mm. a subscript three n? This is a subsequence of a n, right? So, in a n, what you are getting? A one, a two, a three, 
so on right this is your original sequence right yes sir and the limit of the sequence is one now if you consider this new sequence a power three a a sub three and then what you will get a three uh, a six a nine okay. A twelve, right? So this yes, is a, this is a subsequence of of your main sequence, right? Okay, sir. Yes, sir. And since this is a subsequence, the limit of this original sequence it's same as the lim uh, the limit of the subsequence. It's same oh, okay. as the limit of the original sequence. So that's why. So it's one correct, sir. Is also okay. one. Okay, sir. So, uh, one more question, sir. Hmm. Seven point two, the last sum, sir. Like I tried it, but I was not able to solve it, sir. Seven point. Eleven question. I have 11. also doubt in that question. Yeah, yeah. Yes, let sir. me solve it. Okay, uh, so you have a function. 7.22 question, sir. No, 11, question number 11. Okay. 7.2, 10th question, sir. You're asking question of 7.2, question number 10 or 11. So there are only 10, no, sir. No, 7.2, you have 11 number of questions. Yes, yeah, sir, there are 11 number of questions. Uh, so, what is okay, your time? My bad. So the, the last. Uh, I'm question. sorry, sir, but in my. Uh, okay. Oh, I'm referring the old portal. Okay. Okay. You have uh, 11 questions in 7.2. Yes, sir. It's 11 question. See. So the question but is. Sir, uh, I have only 10 question in 7.2. I, I have yes, 11 sir. question in 7.2. Yeah, but the last question, sir. Correct. The 11 question, but for me, it is 10, sir. Yeah. Okay. Can you oh, see my an... screen? Yes, sir. That, this, that question, sir. This one, right? Yes, sir. Correct. This is your doubt. Okay. Yes, sir. And what basically it's saying f of f of x is uh, just just let me know if x I'm by three x plus four three x plus four. There is no negative sign here, right? Yes, sir. We have to find the value of a. Uh, then you need to find the value of a. Okay, so first tell me what is f of x? What is this this one? Uh, X by X plus A. Right? Yes, sir. And then what is this one? So X by X plus A divided by 3 into X by X plus A plus 4. No. Okay. Yeah. So The, is it clear what what I am writing here? No, sir. What is f of m? Instead of x, you write m, right? Yes, sir. M by m plus a, right? Yes, so, sir. So now, what is your m in this expression? This whole thing is your m, right? Yes, sir. So what I need to do? I need to write m in place of x. Right, and that okay. is what I am doing here. I am writing m. So now this is the whole thing is my m. Okay, oh, okay. and this is whole thing is my m. Right. Yes, sir. Okay. Now this whole thing is equal x. to that. Okay, so okay, okay, understood. So now, yes, sir. Uh, you probably you have to do. Yes, sir. Okay. I can solve this from here. Yeah. Yes. Hmm. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Okay, any, any other doubt from your side? Uh, okay, so next is Suman. Yeah. Yes. Huh. Yes, sir. So my doubt is on uh, 1.5. Hmm. Um, so 
question number is um, uh, nine. Uh, question number nine. Um, I get the third option correct, but first option uh, was not coming to minus eight, was coming to zero for me. Uh, so you are saying first option is zero for you. Yeah, because I, I took x square out on both numerator and denominator, which gave me 1 minus 6 by x minus 7 by x square divided by um, 1 plus p by x plus 2 by x square. Just, just, a, I, minute, just a minute. Let me write. Uh, at the meantime, you can help me. It's uh, x square minus 6x. Yeah. x square minus 6x minus 7 divided by x square plus 3x plus 2 yeah. is equal to minus 8. Which is what well, let me, is. Okay, so that, yeah. that we need to check. So before yeah. that, uh, let me compute uh, what is the limit of this. Uh, yeah, so action. I took yeah, can you can you factorize uh, this polynomial? Um, seven is there. Uh, can you factorize this this no, polynomial? No, no, no. Anyone? Any idea how how I can factorize this polynomial? Minus seven plus one is the Okay, so let me let me first check whether I do I need to factorize this polynomial. So this is two. Wow. Okay, this is one. Uh, this is minus three. Okay, I need to factorize. Okay, can't directly apply. Mm, yeah. This this I can write as x. Uh, sorry, x, x and then x plus one. x minus seven. X minus seven. Yeah, correct. And what about the below one? X plus one into x plus plus one into two. x plus two, right? Okay. Two, two, yeah. Now can now can you do it? Okay, so it's x minus seven and x plus two. If I substitute minus one, it becomes minus eight, and minus one in the bottom will become one, so it becomes minus eight. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it, it comes now. But yeah, probably what I did is I took x square and common on both numerator and denominator. Hmm. So. Uh, that gave me like 1 minus uh, 6 by x minus 7 by x square mm -hmm. divided by uh, 10, uh, yeah, uh, 1 plus 3 by x mm -hmm. plus 2 by x square. Mm -hmm. Now when I substitute x as minus 1, uh, this, what happens? Still you will get 0 here, right? Uh, if you substitute this? minus one here, still you will get zero. You can't substitute directly minus one. If I substitute minus one, then one minus three. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. That's true. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it becomes zero. Yes. So you can't substitute minus one directly. This expression because it's always is. You have a factor like uh, a, this x plus one is a factor. That means minus one. If you divide also, it will not uh, change the factor. Okay. Got it. Okay, so yeah. got it, sir. Thank you. Yeah. So you have any other doubt? I have one. Minute. Um, no, sir, I'm done. Yeah. Okay, fine. Thank you. Asit?
Asit. Hello, sir. Yes. Sir, can you tell a little bit about? Uh, I have conceptual doubt on the lecture video seven point five. Hmm. Uh, I I am not getting in the lecture about left hand limit and right hand limit. Can you tell about it? Hmm. I'll come. To that. Okay. Just give me a minute. Uh, let me go to the next person. I uh, there is only one. Uh, Daras. Daras Pratap Singh. Hello. Daras Pratap Singh. Hello. Yeah. What What is your doubt? Sir, I have doubt in activity seven point one. Last question. Seven point one. Last question. Yes, sir. I have already discussed uh, this question. Mm -hmm. Hmm. You have any other doubt apart from this question? One second, sir. Sir, tell me. Hmm. No, sir. I just want to know that uh, uh, that real line. It could take any real value, na? Which one? Other than zero. <laughs> sir, <laughs> the, the one upon x. Huh? It could take any real value other than zero. Then no, this is uh, not one plus option. x. This is not one one by x. This is actually what? This is this is a function. F of x is x plus one by x, right? Yeah. This is yes, sir. Not one by x. You are basically saying one by x. This is x plus one by x. Yeah. Huh. Next. But sir, x can take any value. Mm -hmm. It's depend on the domain. In in each option, you are different different uh, for for each option. You are different different domain, right? It's, okay. It's depend on the domain, right? What value x can take? Okay, it's depend on the domain, right? Okay, sir. So if if I define my function from natural number to R, then x cannot take pi because my by definition the domain of the function is natural number. So x, ha x has to be a member of the natural number. Right? Okay. Okay. Hmm. Sir, sir, I have one more doubt in activity question. It's 7.2. Uh, hmm. I want to know that how to solve the level 2 question. Which one? There are a lot of level 2 questions. Sir, uh, yes, sir. You can turn anyone. I uh, again like I have already solved this question number eleven. Okay, you can check uh, in the video. Oh, okay, sir. Yeah. What? Okay, I see the. So you have uh, so you have you so you want to know about left hand limit and right hand limit right yeah yeah mm -hmm. <coughs> so okay so so first thing is uh left hand limit right So suppose you have a function, let's say um, whatever, you have some domain, right? D from R to R, right? And you want to uh, find the limit of the function at a, at a point. A in your domain, right? And to define this, this concept of limit, you need two things, okay. <clears throat> to define the concept of limit, you need two things. So the first one is left-hand limit. And what is this left-hand limit? Again, like if I give you the definition, then this is precisely one line. So the left-hand limit is, is basically Uh, suppose you have you have number line right r and your a is is somewhere here okay so you want to check where your function is going where your function is approaching when you are coming to this a from, from the left hand side okay, okay. so as as 
x is approaching to a okay right from the left hand side that's why you have this minus sign okay you, you are actually so when you are coming to coming to a from the left hand side that means your x the values of this x are less than or equal to a right because you are coming from the left hand side of a right and all yeah. these points that lies in the left hand side of a they are less than a right so as yeah. you are coming to to oh, a from the left hand side you want to check where this f of x is approaching right so in that case yeah. if this this function is approaching to to some point then you say that suppose your function is approaching uh, to this point uh, to a number this l script l okay so then you say this is your left hand limit okay this is your left hand and if it is approaching okay in some case it may not approach to anything okay it may diverge in that case you say that the left hand limit doesn't exist right okay so estimate okay so in that case you say the limit uh, this is your left hand limit similarly you have a concept of right hand limit right okay so how similarly you can easily uh, uh, guess the definition how you define the right hand limit so the same thing so you have when you come from the right hand side right hand side right and approaches towards a so so you want to check when you are coming to this a from the right hand side right when you a. are coming to this a from the right hand side you want to check where this f of x is approaching right where this f of x is approaching so if this f of x again this f of x may not approach to some some number okay it may it may diverge, diverge. so what i am saying if f of x approaches to something okay if your f of x approaches to some number left this lr okay in that case you say your right hand limit is l okay and if you are left so for at a point you have left hand limit right and okay. also at a point you have right hand limit right when yeah. this left hand limit right is same as the right hand limit then, the when, then you say the limit of the function limit of the function limit of the function at x equal to a okay because we are checking at x equal to a okay exist okay so so to to check the limit of the limit of of a function at at a point a you need to check two things okay not two things you need to check three things okay so first you need to check whether the left hand limit exists okay so if left hand limit left hand limit doesn't exist then from there itself you can say that limit doesn't exist. Okay. limit also limit also limit also not exist okay limit okay. also not exist okay suppose left, left hand limit exists then you go to the right hand limit okay and if the right hand limit doesn't exist okay then also you can say that limit doesn't exist okay. suppose left hand limit exists and right hand limit exists if they are not equal okay in that case also you can say that limit doesn't exist right if if left hand limit exists right hand limit exists and they are same if left hand limit exists and it is same as right hand limit then you say that limit exists limit exists at x, x equal to a, a. okay so okay. so the definition is clear okay sir. yes sir okay let me let me uh, just uh, quickly let me uh, give you a few examples so 
so so now you consider this one one by x right yes so what is the domain of this function i i i can take this function as a map from r minus 0 yeah. to r right yeah so so what i want to check uh I want to check the limit of the function. Okay, so I can talk about the limit of a function even the point is not inside the domain of the function. Okay, so that is one of the advantage of of this uh, limit. Okay, you can cannot do the same for continuity. Okay, so I want to check the check the limit of the function at x equal to zero, right? Okay, so to to check that, what I need to do first, I need to find the what. Left hand limit. Left hand limit, right? So when I'm coming to this zero from the left hand side, where this f of x approaches? O infinity. Why? Because uh, see, see, so one x. This is your zero, right? Okay. You are coming to to zero from the left hand side, right? Sir. You are coming to zero from the left hand side. Yeah. You are going to zero from the left hand side. Agree or not? Yes, sir. That is the definition, right? X goes to zero in yeah. minus. That means what is the value of x? X is negative, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. That means. One by x is what? Minus one. Is also Minus. Uh, also negative. Negative. It's less than zero. Yeah. So and also this this x is going towards zero, right? So so as x as x goes to zero from the negative negative side of zero, this one by x will go towards minus infinity. Right? Okay. That means right, this sir. f of x will go, go towards minus infinity. So since this is going towards minus infinity, so you, you are not getting any finite value, right? So that means your left hand limit doesn't exist. Okay, sir. Sir, can you repeat that part? One by x is less than zero. Hmm. See, if x is small, is going towards zero. Okay. See. Okay going towards zero from the negative side right that means if x is negative okay then one by x is also negative right so we can also say that the the as much as the uh, value of x increases it will come closer to zero but the but the x uh, as the value of x uh, decreases, it will go far from zero. Yes. Okay, sir. Okay. So, so, see, as, as we are approaching towards from the left hand side towards side. zero, yes. as x is less than zero, so one yes. by x is also less than zero. Yes. See, if you take g minus zero point zero zero one, so then if you take the one by minus zero point zero zero one. You will get a large mm. negative number, right? Right, large sir. Negative number. So when x is up, uh, approaching to this zero from the left hand side, then you, then you will get a negative number, large negative number. As you come closer and closer to zero from the negative side, then you one by x will be a large negative number. So that's why one by x uh, will will uh, this one by x will diverge towards this minus infinity. Mm -hmm. Clear. So it will be 10,000 by minus 10,000 by whatever one. it is. I don't care, yeah, but this yes, will sir. be a large thing. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. It will tend to infinity then. Okay. Not tends to infinity, it will tend to minus infinity. Minus infinity. Yes. Similarly, you can compute that this right, right hand limit or limit will is uh, as x 
as x goes to zero positive, this f of x will go towards plus infinity. Plus infinity. Yes, and, sir. And here also, you, when this right hand limit also doesn't exist. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, so left hand limit doesn't exist as well as the right hand limit doesn't exist. That means the limit of the function at x doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. <clears throat> Next, you take this function. Let's say. Uh, greatest integer of x. Yes, sir. In this function, this is function. So. so so what no, it's confusing because you don't know how to draw the graph of the function. That is the main problem. So I want to check the limit of the function at x equal to one. Okay. So you consider this function. So wh what will be the graph of this function? This is zero. This is one. It will be a step function, right, sir? Yeah, that is correct. But I am asking the graph. That this, if it is a step function, tell me how how I can draw so, the graph. Like it will. Uh, we are starting from zero. Hmm. Uh, then it will be moved towards one, hmm. and then it will be uh, up by one step. Then it will start from one to two, uh, upward side from upward side, one unit up like this right yeah so this is one right and yes sir. this point is not included right yes sir. similarly this point is also not included. included so i want to compute the limit of the function at x equal to one right so first tell me what is what will be the left hand limit of this function uh, left hand limit from one left hand limit at x equal to one Oh, it, it will be Asit. You have you you have doubt, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, tell me. Well, what will be the left hand limit at x equal to one? As as x tends to one negative. As as we are approaching x. As we are approaching one from the left hand side, where this f of x will will approach. Uh, one. Why? Sir, this f of x is the greatest integer, right? Yes. Greatest integer of x. So it should be zero then. Yes, zero. See, in this line, in this line, okay, zero to one the value of the function is zero right yes so sir. when you are coming closer and closer to one okay your value of function is precisely zero that is what we have done here as well right so for if you go back uh, i don't yeah for this function yeah for this function if when you are coming to this two right from from the right hand side you are basically on this line right yes sir so same thing happens here, right? When you are coming closer and closer to one, okay, then basically you are on this line. It is also moving between zero and one. Yeah. So it will so be zero. Zero. So the left hand lim limit at x equal to one, it's zero. What about zero. the right hand limit? It will be one. Yeah. One. Right hand limit is one. So again, by the same logic, when you are com coming closer and closer to one from the right hand side, basically you are you are here, right? And the value is one. Okay. So so here both left hand limit and right hand limit exist. Okay. But they are not uh, same. Right? Equal. Yeah. So the limit doesn't exist. Next, you consider this function f of x equal to mod x. Right. Now. Uh, you draw the graph. What is the graph of this function? B is a. Yes, B is a.
this is the graph so uh, so i want to compute the limit of the function at x equal to 0 first tell me what is the left hand limit as x tends to 0 negative minus infinity minus infinity ha huh? Yes, sir. Zero, zero, zero. Sorry, zero. If x is coming towards uh, sorry, zero, zero, zero. Yes, it f, will. f of x is also moving towards zero. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So this is your left hand limit, right? Yes, and sir. Similarly, what is your right hand limit? Zero. Zero. It is also zero. It is also zero. Again, right. If you are coming to zero from your right hand side. Yes, sir. This f of x is. Coming also to moving towards zero. Zero, right? That means your so in this case your left hand limit, right hand limit, they are same. So and basically, yeah, both exist and they are equals to zero, right? So so for for this function, yes, limit at x equal to zero exists. Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. And the limit for this is also zero, right, sir? Mm -hmm. Okay, sir. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anything else? Yes, sir. Hmm. Yes, sir. Activity question 7.5. Question number 6. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, it's more or less, it's it's a question related to this topic, okay? So, mm -hmm. let me let me do it completely. So, what is your function? F x square x? by mod x. Square by mod x, okay. So, this is your function, okay? Again, like this should, this is not completely uh, correct if x is not equal to 0. So mm -hmm. this part is perfect okay. because at zero it is not defined, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. <clears throat> so I want to compute the limit of the function at x equal to zero, right? Yes, sir. So uh, uh, before going into that, first tell me if x is less than zero, what is the value of this mod x? Um, minus x minus x and if x is greater than 0 x x right so so by using this argument i can now i can write my f of x in two two different ways right we will yes. we have to take two different cases and then then we have to yeah, yes yes but i certainly i can write my f of x right in two different uh, cases using two different cases this is what this is uh, uh, minus x, right? If yes, sir. X, x is smaller than, than zero. X. Smaller than zero. And this is x. If x is greater than zero. Greater than zero, right? This is yes, my sir. function. And I want to compute the limit of the function at x equal to zero. So let me start with the left hand limit. Right. So suppose so when x is going towards zero negative. Right. When I am coming to zero uh, from the negative side of uh, zero, right? Then where this value of this function will will approach? So this is my zero, right? And I am coming from the x is coming in this direction, right? Then so when x is coming to zero from the right hand side, sorry, left hand side, where this value of this function will go? So, so when x is coming to zero from the left hand side, that means my x is less than zero. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. And in that yes, case, sir. what is the value of this function? Minus x. Minus x. Right. And when minus. Are, when x is coming to zero, right from the right hand side, where this minus x will come? Mi minus zero. Yeah, it's whatever it's it is it, 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 it will come to zero right 
yes, like min- minus yes, 0 sir. or plus 0 like they are same right so when when x is coming towards zero, when you are coming to zero from the left hand side the value of the function is going towards zero right zero yes so that means the left hand limit yes, is zero right and similarly what about the right hand limit it will right also zero limit. right so when x is going towards zero positive what is your f of x f of x is positive positive x like that is x right so in yes, that sir. case so when x is going towards zero plus then f of x is also will go towards zero zero right right so so in both the case they are same so the limit exists and equal right so sorry uh, since the left hand limit and right hand uh, limit exist and they are equal that's why the limit of the function at x equal to zero exists clear yes so, sir crystal clear sir okay thank you sir yeah thanks okay i'll uh, probably i'll stop the session okay Okay sir thank you yeah. sir thanks thank you also. thank you sir oh thank you all good night good night sir good night sir